uh, this morning. We are in an unprecedented time in Texas history. Because of small business, mid-sized business, big business in Texas, because of the hard work of millions of Texans, our economy has been robust. We have more money on hand than we believe any legislature has ever had at one moment in time dealing with budget issues. There is no support for exceeding the spending cap. But that also means that when we leave, we will have approximately four and a half to five billion dollars in the state's checking account. The Senate, on a bipartisan basis, wants to offer tax relief, we want to reduce debt, and we want to address the significant needs of our state for pensions, facilities, to a long list of other items that the senators will decide. Senator Eltai has talked about that in committee. I support focusing on the needs of the state. Teacher, retired teacher's health care is a great example. Senator Nelson and others have let on tax relief. And gosh darn, we know our business is a taxpayer's need tax relief. But because of the cap, we are limited in what we can do. So we have a new bold proposal in this new day of bold ideas. And we're going to lay those out for you right now uh, from Senator Hinojosa, Senator Altai, and our Chairman of Finance, Senator Nelson. Senator Nelson. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Uh, this morning, I filed Senate Bill 15, which actually the three of us joint authored. So uh, Senate Bill 15 and SJR 3 to exempt tax relief from our state spending limit. Currently, under Article 8 of the Constitution, any appropriation made by the legislature that is not already dedicated by the Constitution is subject to the spending cap. We all know that the intent of the provision was to control the growth of government. Giving money back to the taxpayers does not grow government. In fact, I would argue quite the opposite. Under Senate Bill 15, our spending limit would no longer serve as a barrier for tax relief. SJR would put that question before the people of Texas in the form of an amendment to the Constitution. I, the voters will overwhelmingly approve this. Our economy is booming. We have more than enough revenue to both meet our needs and provide for tax relief. This legislation is an important step toward that goal, and I want to thank you, Governor Patrick, Senator Elfai, Senator Hinojosa. Uh, it's a no-brainer, and certainly the bill that you're going to do, that Senator Hinojosa is going to talk about, I just can't imagine why we would not allow for tax relief or buying down our debt. Um, why that would come into our cap? We should be encouraging those. So, Senator Hinojosa. Good morning. You know we. Uh, take pride in our state, that we are paying as you go state, uh, and that we don't issue debt. But unfortunately, in the last 10, 12 years, our state debt has grown tremendously. Uh, from fiscal year 2004, the state debt went and increased by 188% to $43.5 billion. The capital's office estimates that with principal and interest, we owe $75.5 billion. In Senate Bill 2, we appropriated $3.9 billion to serve the debt. At times, we have a healthy reserve in our banking account. At times, we have a healthy running day. Uh, we need to pay down that debt. Uh, that debt will not go away unless we are responsible and find ways so that we will sell future generations with this debt. Because that debt will lead to interest and tax sometime in the future. Uh, and <coughs> the problem that we have is that we have a constitutional spending cap. Uh, and my legislation, uh, SGR 4, uh, Senate Bill 16, uh, would allow for expenditures uh, to pay down debt to not count 
mandatory spending cap. I think it's a flexibility that we need in the legislature, but that we are fortunate enough to have a type of money uh, in our accounts, they want to really public a favor by paying down the debt so that our future generations will not be settled uh, with that debt. Thank you. You know, my concerns have been all along over the last several years, the fact we've doubled the state debt. In this session, my concerns have been how do we address the needs of the state? Unfunded pension funds, TRS care, roads, continue to fund water infrastructure, the Texas Tomorrow Fund, all these deferred maintenance facilities, all these issues, how do we meet those needs and accomplish tax cuts? And I've always felt the needs of the state should come first. We have had a total commitment from Governor Patrick and Chairman Nelson the entire time that we would address these needs, but I think what we're doing today just takes it a step further. This gives us a path to spending money on one-time items such as ERS pension funds, TRS care, TxDOT, Texas Tomorrow Fund, deferred maintenance, and I want to also point out the governor's Patrick's commitment to facilities and deferred maintenance. He was nice enough to appoint a select committee that I'm going to chair on facilities. The commitment has been there. I've had trouble seeing the path of how we get there. I think this is a significant step in freeing up some money so we can solve some of these problems. So I appreciate uh, Governor Patrick, Chairman Nelson, and Chairman Hosa for their efforts today. Uh, any questions? If the voters have to approve this, you could still you know, you use this uh, exemption this session? Well, first of all, it would depend on how quickly it goes through and what we get on the ballot. This would we could pass legislation that would be contingent upon this passing. But let's keep in mind that currently we have enough money under the cap to give the $4.6 billion that we laid out in tax relief and still put an additional $4.5 billion or $4 billion on top of what we've already spent under the cap to address the concerns of Senator Altai and Senator Hinojosa and, and myself and Senator Nelson. What this situation we're in, though, is if we want to pay down more debt, we can't. If we want to get more tax relief, we can't. And so I believe, as Senator Nelson, as Chair Nelson says, on the ballot, if you ask voters, do you think giving them their money back should count against the budget? And do you think paying down debt should count against the budget? I think they'll overwhelmingly say it should not. And then we can address in these times when we have the access to the revenue that we have, to the hard work of Texans, that we can address these needs. So uh, I feel very comfortable that we can do both things we want to do under the cap, but this, for now and in the future, will give us a pathway to really address these needs. I want to give people more money back. We want to take care of more money. We're limited in what we can do. So do you, sure. do you plan to leave any money for possible school finance decision? Well, first of all, under the cap, if we address the concerns of the senators on the issues that all of us care about, addressing our needs and our tax relief plan, there's enough money to do that. And we would still have $4.9 billion left over. But you're talking about maybe using some of that for debt relief. We could use it for debt relief. We could use it for additional tax relief. My goal, and we haven't talked about it, we have to pass the bill first, but my personal goal would to be to leave several billion of that uh, as a contingency because of the price of oil, because of the school finance lawsuit, because of paying some other issues. But that's up to the senators. And the senators, I trust, will make the best decisions to do that. So would, so would things like the deferred maintenance be included in the budget as, uh, say, a special item? Because uh, Governor Perry was always really proud of the, uh, vetoing the special items and the claims at the budget. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure in answer to your question where we put it, but depending on, you know, if it's deferred maintenance on roads, it could easily fall under the, the uh, it would be under the economic development section of the budget. But, um, you know, the issue is that our economy in Texas has been doing so well that I truly believe we will be able to address issues like deferred maintenance like the things that Senator Elkai cited, and provide tax relief for, for our homes and our businesses. And 
the, the bigger issue, I think, is both of these issues should happen anyway in any budget cycle. It is I, unimaginable to me. You know, sometimes these valid issues are hard to explain when you get back home. I can go back home and tell people, you know, if, if you won the lottery tomorrow and, you, you know, you got extra money, what are you going to do? They'll say, pay off my mortgage, pay off my car. And the state ought to be able to do that for our own debt in any cycle where we have some extra money that, that because the economy is doing well, we should be able to do that. Same thing with tax relief. Uh, it's, it's, we should be doing this in any case. But you could do that by passing a bill by a city majority in each chamber to go over the limit. Now, aren't you acknowledging that's politically undoable? I'm not acknowledging it's politically undoable. I am acknowledging that I think that our Constitution should be amended so that for now and forever, we understand that paying off debt and providing tax relief is not going to count against that budget cap. So yeah. our kind look, we're, in fact, we're not even a down, a down target yet. Our sales tax numbers are still very strong. But with the price of oil, it could well be that we could have a slowdown. But our economy will will boom again like it has the last couple of years uh, at some point, and hopefully for a, for a long period. When that happens, as Senator Hinojosa said, let's take that money, or Senator Eltype said, let's take that money, pay down debt, address needs, and do tax relief. We can do all of this. this is not a, you know, we can only do one thing. And as we had the press conference the other day on Medicaid, look, it's 29.8 29 29 billion. If you take Medicaid and education together, it's, it, and, and public safety is 90% of our budget. So that spends a lot of the money just addressing the current needs. What we're talking about is when we have this additional money to be able to address these needs. And, I, and look, we do not want to be Washington, D.C. We are not going to allow Texas to be steep in debt. And the fact that you have Democrats and Republicans from all across the state unified in recognizing that issue is a powerful message for the state of Texas that the rest of the country, by the way, Washington should follow. We'll just wrap up. No, go ahead. Just a real quick point. By uh, the legislature having the flexibility of uh, not counting uh, tax cuts uh, or the payment of debt uh, towards the constitutional spending limit, it will free up more money to deal with other issues, such as education. So in this case scenario, um, you would go up to the cap, and then as revenues came in, that would go uh, back to taxpayers or uh, to pay down the debt, and this would be kind of an ongoing basis as, as revenues coming in? I hope any time that we have extra money, we can look at meeting our, our paying off our debt so that that frees up money to do things like I'll talk cited, and I hope any time we have extra money, we can give some of it back. Because it's the people who pay those taxes in, I'd love to give some of it back when we have some extra Senator Alpha, Tyler, are you more likely now to support the tax cut package with this proposal likely to pass? Us? I will only support the tax package when I see a clear, right path to fixing the problems we're talking about. This is a major step to getting there. Because without this, you've got money stranded that we could use for one-time items. I mean, without this, you've only got four and a half billion left to address all these issues and exceptional items in the budget. I'm not saying it can't be done, but I can't support tax cuts until I see how we do it. If you free up another four billion dollars here, I can see a clear path to making major improvements in pension funds, TRS care, roads, deferred maintenance, water. I can see it. So when I see a clear glide path, I'll support tax cuts. Well, the can. Does this mean and, can I, Senator Altai was one of the first people way before this session started to complain about how yeah. our debt was growing and saying we need to be paying off our debt. I've heard that so many times. I've heard and you're sick of it. And that's, no, 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 no. No. and that's what the voters have been saying. Yeah. And by the way, remember, this it is not a conservative thing to leave this session with $4.9 billion in the checking account and roughly $11 million by the end of the biennium of the rainy day fund, earning virtually no interest while we're paying high interest on debt. And this is also money, again, that can increase the money we send back to taxpayers. So the conservative thing is, you know, the people sent us here to be, to be smart with their money. This is about being smart. And at the end of the day, you know, we already have over 20 authors on tax relief bills. We have 
I think universal support on addressing needs and paying down debt. We're going to get all of it done in the Texas Senate. And this is just, uh, you know, this was an idea that we started talking about because, again, this is, we've never been in this position before in history that we actually had this amount of money above what the cap says we can spend. So we're not busting the cap. We're simply being smart and saying money that goes back to taxpayers, which is as high priority as anything for me, and money that goes down to pay debt, which is a high priority for me, does not count against the budget. Because um, people would say, hey, you had 4.9 million, 4 million left. Why don't you pay off some of that debt? Why don't you send us some more of that money back? I'm sorry, the Constitution doesn't allow it. Thank you all. Appreciate it very Thank much. Thank you. Finance code.